Estás viendo Canal América, Televisión Dominicana para el Mundo. Sometimes life can be so damn hard. You don't know where to go. Everything keeps falling apart. Yeah. You try to do your best, but only God knows that you've given everything you've got, but the world takes you down. You just keep moving on. Let your fears. Welcome to a Time for Truth show. I'm your host, Dr. Bernard Fialkoffen. It's a pleasure to have you back with us again today. And first, I want to address a common question that we're getting is, How do we get the previous episodes? So you go on a YouTube, select the Time for True show, and you find and click the subscribe button. We'll be happy to have you as one of our viewers, and you'll be availed of all the previous episodes. And tonight we're going to deal in a subject that is humanity, brotherhood, bringing joy and good feelings, good vibes, good energy to the world. In the last few years, it's something that there's been a scarcity of. And tonight, we're very lucky to have on our show a man who has dedicated his life to bringing joy and happiness to people not only in America, but all over the world. Mr. Frank Shake and Bake Streety. And Buddha, if you put him up on the screen with his pictures, we'll introduce him to our viewers. A Harlem Globetrotter. There you see Frank. Mr. Streety is a legend. So well known for his dazzling dribbling and court presence. He actually scared Tiny Archibald when he had to guard him because... That's why they call him Shake and Bake, because you never knew where he was going to end up next. Shake graduated from Broom Tech, which is now known as Sunny Broom, with a degree in business administration in 68. And during that time, ESPN named him a streetball legend and included him amongst the top 24 best players produced by the famed Rucker Park League. Those including famous professionals such as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Wilt Chamberlain, and others. He began playing at the age of 12 and was a standout on the Eastern District High School's basketball team before going to Broom Tech in 66 under its heyday under legendary coach Dick Baldwin. Dick said Frank was the most exciting and flamboyant player he'd ever had, a great dribbler with showbiz appeal. During his years at Sonny Broom, his team went 53-12, and winning multiple tournaments and championships and heading to the Nationals both years. After graduating, Frank continued his education and basketball success at Kentucky's Murray State, graduating with a bachelor's degree in business. Mr. Streety, who had led teams from both colleges into NCAA playoff games, was inducted in the NCAA Hall of Fame in 1992. And there you see him with the ball. In 69, he decided to forego the Detroit Pistons of the NBA and he joined the Harlem Globetrotters and played in venues across the globe. He relayed that he was the type of individual who liked to see people happy. He liked to cover up 
the frustrations and problems of the world. And we're the Globetrotters, where basketball was half serious and half fun. He always said people could laugh and be happy. And he just loved kids. And after retiring in Florida and continuing to show off his basketball hoop tricks, he combined his love of the game with community service as instructor for the Youth Basketball of America Hoopsters, this program in Orlando, and as the CEO of the 360 ESAH Foundation with the aim to inspire, educate, and empower communities around the world through the grassroots effort to bring about positive change in the life of our youth. Mr. Streety is also an ambassador for the Drug-Free World Education Program, safeguarding the lives of youth all across the country. There you see him with his lovely wife, Michelle. And Buddha, please bring Frank Streety up live on our screen. And let's bid a warm, a time for truth welcome to Shake and Bake Streety. How you doing? Yeah, I just finished taking a little beautiful nap, as I always do. Um, I feel great right now. Um, that is something I've developed later in life. To take a little nap to start all over a good day. Well, you, you know, know what? First... You you done you done so much in your life. I tell you what, I don't think you've been stopping too often. So you you definitely deserve any nap mm -hmm. you want. I was going to ask you a question. What was it like growing up in Harlem uh, back when you were a kid? Well, it was a, it was a different type of life. Um, as people know, uh, back in the day, not, not only that did they call it Harlem, but it's pretty much a, a language that everybody pretty much know, which was called the ghetto. And you know, when you deal with the ghetto type of situation, you, uh, you come up with a lot of a lot of drugs, a lot of robbery, a little bit of everything. Um, at that, at that years in the early '60s and the late '50s, there was a lot of lot going on during that time. And one like um, was easy for kids to grow up to be kids at a very early age. Raising up in Harlem, at the age about nine or ten years old, you're almost like an adult because you have to make adult decisions because a lot of things was going on. Harlem had so much going on during that time, uh, where people from all over the world used to come into Harlem because there was so much going on. Uh, people to come because all the top singers in the world used to go to the Apollo. The Apollo Dela. Most everybody in this world know what the Apollo was. And that's where all the superstars really first got their big break is by performing at the Apollo. We also had a place where they had outstanding people who to go there. It's called a Cotton Club. That was on Broadway. You know, 125th Street. It's called a Cotton Club. So they had entertainment. They had more like blues and jazz things in that nature. And blues and jazz was very, very big back in Harlem during that time. So a lot of people used to come just to go to the Cotton Club to get that straight on, straight blues and, and things in that nature. Also, there's, there's we the first people at that time used to have the after hour clubs. You used to go in there at night and used to leave and be, be in the morning. <laughs> and to go to different places to have breakfast <laughs> In, in the morning. But Harlem was um, a place to reckon with because usually it's the first of everything. Uh, we had one ball, uh, we had to go to the park and the playground, and we had thousands of kids, all of us, and we had one basketball. And so we used to play games, which is very different, very, very different to anybody around the world, is that when you shoot the basketball, and you get a rebound, you're allowed to go back up with it. 
And a lot of times, it's not going to be easy to go right back up with it. So you have to learn how to twist and turn and do a lot of different things just to get the basketball off because everybody's on you on defense because they don't want to lose because you've had a long line behind you. So if you lose the game, you got a long wait for the second time around. So it was uh, a lot of the tricky things we used to do with the basketball to try to win or for somebody can't block your shot. So that's why um, the, the first owner of the Harlem Globetrotters, his name was Abe Schaperstein. He had a dream about basketball players. He went to LA, Detroit, Chicago. He went all the different places around the world. And then he stopped at a place called Harlem where I was born and raised at. Uh, actually, I was born in Harlem Hospital. <laughs> But anyway, um, Abe Schaffstein, when he came to Harlem, um, that's when you showed that, that little movie with Marcus Haynes in the hallway dribbling past people on defense in the hallway. Abe Schaffstein was crazy about that. Then when Abe Schaffstein came to the, the, to the basketball courts at the park and saw so many people out there um, performing with the basketball, and doing different things because there's no other place in the world that do not take the basketball back. So you play any other place in the world, if you shoot the ball and you rebound, you got to go all the way back behind the foul line, and start all over. But in Harlem, everything goes. You keep on playing, you keep on playing, and you got to be dipping and dabbing and twisting and turning, all kind of things like that. So when Abe Schaffenstein saw something like that, he said, Woo-wee, I'm glad I came to a place called Harlem. And at that time, he named the team. So that's what the first name Harlem came from, Harlem. And then he said, I got to take this here team on the road. I got to travel with this team. And that's when the Globe Trotters came in, the Globe. That's traveling around. You get the glow. And that's when the uh, Abe said, this team we're going to call the Harlem Glow Trotters. Trotters is when you plan, you're moving around. You're moving here, the place to place. You're trotting, you're trotting. And Globe is when you're traveling in different parts of the world. So that's when um, Abe came up with the name in his dream. He said, oh, I couldn't find a better name than that. And as today, People, and then he had that music, Sweet Georgia Brown. And that music with the Harlem Globetrotters was the open stages of everybody was just so happy and so warm. You know, when you come into the, to the arena and you see the people and, and he put that music on, Sweet Georgia Brown, and they talk about, it says, yes, the Harlem Glow trotters in the house. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. You know, you got me. I, I feel like I'm in the crowd already. I was going to ask you mm -hmm. something. When you played back in college and you were winning all those championship games, I heard that as you got to the end of your career, they gave you a 90-second ovation. Is that true? Yes, yes. Um... I'm a very dedicated individual. When I plan to do something with somebody, I'll be a part of something. I give more than 100%. When I elected to go to Broom Tech and Mary State, I gave my 100% playing ability. And I'm an individual like to win. I'm a, uh, I have winning attitude, winning moves. I um, talk to my teammates, and let them know I'm a part of them. And a lot of times my winning ability and strategies and talking to them have rubbed off on them. They start to feel they, they, they want to win. They had said to me and many a times that they lost a lot of games when they was in high school because they didn't have a leader 
that always had that ability to feel uh, positive, always had that positive attitude. When I went someplace with my teammates to go, I, I always said, we're going to win this. I always had the attitude, I'm going to win. And I, I kind of rubbed it off with a lot of my teammates. So that's why we had a, a very successful college career because I always had the attitude to win and to be a part of the team. All walk, I went to school all walks of life. Coming out of Harlem, dealing with a, this a black neighborhood, it was very different for me when I went upstate to college because we had all walks of life. It was a whole new ball game for me. Even when I went to school in Kentucky, as you know, it was a whole new ball game for me because I had to learn to deal with all walks of life. It, very, it wasn't easy in the beginning, but the people for my ability to playing and winning, uh, I got to, 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 to mingle, and mingle with all the different walks of life at the college, off campus, and I, I began to feel more like a person. There's something I was missing when I was just in Harlem because now I got to, to intermingle with all walks of life. And I never know that I could ever be a part of being a friend with a white person during that time and find out that they're, they're human like everybody else because I was just in an all black neighborhood. So for me to experience that, that part of it was a wonderful thing. Right now, as we speak today, I have all types of nationalities that are very good friends with, my, with me. And I was so happy and I thank God that that, that I had the opportunity to be in those positions because a lot of people were still left behind and, uh, and didn't realize the all walks of life was a wonderful thing. And I got the opportunity to be a part of that. So I real, felt real good by going to uh, these type of schools that gave me a lot of experience and a lot of things that I never know about by coming out just being in Harlem. And a lot of things in Harlem you had to learn to avoid because there's so much drugs and things was going on. Fighting, the game banging and things of that nature. I went to school and college, was all there was more about studying, um, getting to know people. It was a whole new life for me I had to learn, which was not easy coming out of a situation for many years. But I made my mind up to do this. So like I said, I'm an optimistic individual. I like to win, I like to be a part of everything that is going on. So uh, I, I made it my business to, 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 to blend in. And I, I sure enough did, and I, I was so happy that I wow, got an well, opportunity. You, you, you know what? I, I was looking over everything you accomplished, and it, yeah, I can, as I'm listening to you tell me the story and tell our viewers the story, it makes total sense. What I want to ask you, you, you were inducted into the NCAA Hall of Fame how did that feel to you when you heard that you were going to be inducted? Oh, boy. Ooh. You know, um, during that time, there was a very, very few people was going to college during that time in my neighborhood. Uh, the big thing when I was coming up is graduating from high school. That was a big thing. During that time, I don't know if people know about this or not, but they had like super seniors in high school that that some was actually 20 and 21 years old, still going in their senior year. That was back in the day. Uh, you couldn't graduate from high school. They, they, they kept you there until you, no matter what age you were, you were still in high school, <laughs> you know? But um, when I had, when I played basketball in high school, I was all city, all empire and best were in high school. I went back to back championship at Madison Square Garden. So I was very familiar with winning. I was very familiar of, of playing the game of basketball and being optimistic. So when I got the opportunity to go to college, I, I, I sit down, I prayed, and I said to myself, I'm gonna make the best out of it. I know there's top ball players that I'll be playing against. And, um, and I got to outshine them. I just kept telling myself, be optimistic and you got to outshine them. 
You got to work hard. You got to work hard. You got to be positive. I worked out. I was I was in very good shape. A lot of players used to play, and some of them were not in shape. I could play the first quarter like I played the last quarter. I was always in shape. They said, "No, oh, this guy is fast. He's he he's breathless. He's a, he 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 plays so so fast, and he should be out of breath." I I played like the first quarter, like I said, all the way to the end quarter, like the first quarter. And I always said to myself, "Be play hard, and things things will start to work out for you in the long run." And this would would happen. I was so optimistic, and I worked out. And I and, and always say, I could be, I could come something. And 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 one of my first big awards that I received as being a basketball player, that all those Super Bowl players, uh, you name that was in the NBA, I played against, I played against, and they all talked about me. Back in the day, the college coaches used to have strategy, they used to talk. Before my team came to them, well, we got to find a way to guard this Frank Streety. They used to have a, tapes and stuff like that on me, how to guard me. I found ways. See, my athletic ability and being in shape got me through a lot of the traps and things that they were trying to do on me. I was fast. I had a lot of strength. I was optimistic. I could handle the ball any kind of way. I had my left hand was just as strong as my right hand, and I'm right-handed. So I have to be able to go behind my back, between my legs, crisscross, this, that. They said, oh, my God, and I do it I do with consistency. I was one of the players that had stats. I didn't lose the ball. I didn't throw the ball away. I was maybe lose maybe once or twice in, the, in any game. Some games I... I played without no turnovers. I was good because I always say you can't win without the basketball. You can't give it up. So that was one of my other models to me. Don't give that ball up to the other team. So I was very, very good with the ball, not losing it. So I, I was I was very good in that department. And out of the coaches for all the play, places I played that you know that I wasn't a turnover. They they try to trap me. Things of that nature. I was not a turnover individual. And they, that's why they was studying me so much because the things I was doing with the basketball and not turning it over, it ends up, it got me into the Hall of Fame of basketball. Or could you imagine a kid coming out of Harlem, that background with the drugs and the fight and the, and the, the gangs and things of that nature to be able to go on to college and then be able to be uh, uh, elected into the Hall of Fame of all the superstars you see on TV. That was one of the greatest times of my life and it paid off by being optimistic, positive, and don't follow, don't be a follower. So you in Harlem, you follow, you end up, half of the person end up being on drugs and doing the wrong thing. I was never a follower. I always wanted to be something that somebody could be proud of me, my parents. And I always told my mother and father, I'm, be, I'm always going to become something. I always was optimistic about that. Wow. And every Sunday, time I went to church. But um, becoming amazing. This, you know, I was going to say to you, it's so, it's so wow. amazing, so amazing. <clears throat> like the, you know, hearing you speak and the energy that comes across the screen as you speak and your intensity, I mean, you know, I can almost visualize like you playing, amazing. I can see why you were inducted. And so I want to ask you, because then, now here you are, you're on the Globetrotters all these years, and, you know, it seems like you were like, uh, like you were made for the Globetrotters. What was it like for you in your Globetrotter career? Well, first of all, when you, um, during that time when you play for the Harlem Globetrotters, you have to have a different type of attitude. Whatever attitude you had in the past, 
about being strongly competitive. Uh, you know, when people come to games, they be rooting for their team and booing the other teams and things in that nature. When you come to the Globetrotters and you play, your main objective is the people in the audience. The main objective also is to make them feel good, make them feel happy, to enjoy, to enjoy the game. See, when you're in the NBA, you got people who could be in the, in the stadium that the team that playing against them is beating their team and there be arguments, oh, boo, 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 boo. <clears throat> you got booing, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> when you suit on that uniform with the Harlem Globetrotters, your main objective is to make people happy. And that was the thing that made me feel good when I put that uniform on and I went out and I caught and I see people laughing and joking and having fun and enjoying themselves. And I see them with their kids and their kids having fun. So, oh, you see that? Da, 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 da. Oh, wow, wow. oh boy, you couldn't act for a better feeling during that time playing on the court, <clears throat> which it was a big difference than when you're going on the court, when you're doing the competitive thing and you got people in the stadium that's booing and fighting, doing different types of language. It's a whole new ball game when you put that uniform with the Harlem Globetrotters and you start, you start to perform. Boy, you having such a rush of a good feeling when you see somebody happy. We deal with so much stress. And like, you know, you go to the regular NBA games, you got a lot of stress, people cursing, people drinking, and, and, and going all off and doing all different types of things. See, when you come to the Harlem Globetrotters, we want people to be happy and kids to, to enjoy themselves. So when they leave the, the game watching our team, see, we were the originals, and our main objective is the people. See, they have different Globetrotters at different times of the year that players that, that always get Harlem Globetrotters, but they have different players for different situations. During my time, I played with the originals, with the the, the, the clown prince like Melilock Lemon, Geese, uh, Bobby Hunter, uh, Showboat Hall, Marcus Haynes, you know, the first bullhead get guy before uh, uh, Michael Jordan, the first bullhead guy was Curly Neal. We just spend balls on his head. He's bald headed. And we used to call him Curly Neal, you know. We had a clown prince, Melilock Lemon, where we did all different types of tricks and and things and 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 and, and make people happy and, and feel together with you no know, no separation in the audience. Oh, I want this team for that team. No, it wasn't nothing like that. They was happy and they enjoyed themselves. Could you imagine to just go someplace and just have a good time with your kids? And that was our main objective of all. You couldn't feel, have a good feeling that when the game was over, how the spectator was so happy. And to see that with so much stress going on in the world today, to be in the arena and have so many people, because we have to pack them in now, and we have so many people so happy and leave it in the kids. Are, oh, man, they're so thrilled. And what a wonderful feeling. And I felt so great coming from a competitive of winning and losing and, 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 and being on a team and making people so happy. What was a wonderful thing for me, wonderful thing. Uh, I, I look forward every night to play. Wow. Look well, you know, you know what, Frank? I got to tell you, I've done a lot of shows, but the show tonight has been full of life. And, you know, unfortunately, we had such a good time. We run out of time. But I tell you what, you got me happy. I know anybody watching the show tonight is happy. And, mm -hmm. you know, this is a great tribute to you, to the Harlem Globetrotters. Uh, we ran out of time for this show. We're going to have to have you back. But thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you very much, Doc. I really appreciate it that you have me. And I'm, I'm honored.
to have a person like you because you have a, such a wonderful, outstanding personality. And I feel good when I talk with you. You make a lot of sense. You make a lot of sense. But I'm, I'm going to thank you and thank you and thank you for allowing me to be here to share my story with you. Well, you, you know what? It's our pleasure and we'll continue. We'll have you on a show again and we'll talk about your your programs that you're doing, about that you're, you know, you're serious and the other program about the drug education and all these things they do for kids. For tonight, unfortunately, we run out of time. But for those of you watching, let's listen to what Shake and Bake Street has said. It's okay to be competitive, do a good product, but let's make each other happy. Let's really produce something important in the world. Let's be together and let's see each other through. Thank you, Frank Streety, Globetrotters, and thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time. No problem. I'm looking forward for the next time, too. Thank you. Sometimes life can be so damn hard. You don't know where to go. Everything keeps falling apart. Try to do your best, but only God knows that you've given everything you've got, but the world takes you down. You just keep moving on, let your feet.